Gaming keyboards don't have to look like this. Or this, or God, definitely not that. Howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and for years, gamers have used keyboards that look like boring little rectangles. But why? It doesn't have to be that way. What if I told you that gaming keyboards could look like this and sound like this? But we all know that personality is better than looks, right? So in this video, I'm gonna be putting this keyboard, the Black Diamond 75, to the test to see if it works as a gaming keyboard. But wait, why is it doing that? Oh no. We might have some issues along the way. But if you can look past those issues, this keyboard might just be the coolest gaming keyboard ever. Now, later in this video, I'm going to compare this board to a couple gaming keyboards that are really, really popular, like the Wu-Ting and Razer, I guess. But first, let's get this thing unboxed, and wow, is this box heavy. Now, this keyboard was sent to me for free by Dry Studio, which is Angry Meow, the creators of the Cyberboard and a couple other very crazy keyboards. However, they did not review this video or tell me what to say in any way, as you'll see in just a minute. Now, opening the box, and oh my... God, this keyboard is very pretty, but we'll look at the keyboard in a second. Are there any accessories? Well, first we've got a cable that's braided and of relatively decent quality, and then we've got this weird little dongle thing. Wait, is this keyboard wireless? A wireless gaming keyboard? If it is, we're gonna have to check that out later, because that's gonna be important. Speaking of important, you're probably wondering how much this keyboard costs, and Bear with me on this one, because it starts at 240 US dollars. Now, if you're new to keyboards, you might be thinking, oh my god, Hippio, that is the craziest thing you've ever said to me, $240 for a gaming keyboard, that's crazy. But considering Logitech is charging $200 for this, a keyboard that looks like it could cost $20, then I think the $240 could be justified, but that's if the keyboard is good, so we're gonna have to figure that out as well. Now, there's also a version that's 295 bucks that I have here, and I'm pretty sure the only difference is RGB. Now, I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I'll put it in the pinned comment, but I looked at their website really hard, and that's all I could find. Now, this keyboard does come pre-built as a full kit, and does ship in stock. So unlike a lot of custom keyboards, you don't have to wait a full year just to get it and then forget that you ordered it and then have keyboards piling up outside your door and then people coming to your door and saying, why are you Mr. Keyboard? Give me free keyboard, please. Anyways, I have some issues. Oh, did I mention it comes in two colors? So speaking of issues, you might have trouble deciding which because they're both very beautiful. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, Hippio, what makes this a gaming keyboard? Like. Why would I use this keyboard for gaming over my Razer keyboard or Corsair keyboard that they brainwashed me into thinking is really good for it? Well, let's just start with this thing does have a thousand hertz pulling rate, aka the same as boards like the Wu-Ting, which everybody says, including me, is one of the best gaming keyboards. It's got switches that I think are generally pretty good for gaming, and it's also got a very fast latency when you use it in wireless mode. Well, theoretically. It's also a keyboard. I don't know if you guys know this, but keyboards are pretty good for gaming. And it doesn't necessarily matter which keyboard you use, just use a keyboard. If you blame your gear on why you suck at video games, you might want to improve a little bit first before getting better gear, but maybe that's just my own personal gripes. I think everybody knows that one guy that absolutely sucks in their group, but his gamer setup be looking like he just dropped five grand on it, and uh, it didn't make him any better. Anyways, let's talk about the construction of this thing, because you might have noticed that it doesn't look like a normal keyboard. Now, this is inspired by a Lamborghini Black Diamond, and that's where the name Black Diamond comes from. No, it's not the Climber brand. I was really confused at first as well. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't drive. I don't know about cars. I don't like cars. I much prefer bikes and walkability and uh, not just bikes. Shout out to that guy. But what I will say is when a car costs a couple hundred thousand dollars and then you model a keyboard after it, that is kind of cool. Now, there's a few things that makes this keyboard build a little bit more premium. And those are the materials. Like, it's built from hand-polished acrylic and Bruh. carbon fiber and Bruh. a solid aluminum body. But personally, what I think is the coolest is these leaf springs, which we're gonna talk about later. But what I do wanna talk about now is these keycaps. And they look really pretty, but they actually have a huge problem. And no, it's not the fact that they look like clones of a very famous keycap set, GMK Blue Samurai. Although, that is a little bit suspicious, I'm not gonna lie. But these are double-shot PBT keycaps that come included on the board. They're of 
relative quality. Like, they're going to be a lot better than your average keycap that's going to come included on a Razer Logitech keyboard, simply because they are of a better quality material. And they're also not shine through because shine through keycaps tend to be made out of very thin garbage plastic. However, they're definitely not the best that keycaps can get. One of the reasons why I can tell is by looking at the shift key. You see that space between the F and the T? Well, this is actually a telltale sign that they're using a pretty cheap factory for these. Molds for keycaps are actually very, very expensive. And one of the main factories that makes keycaps in China happened to make this shift keycap. And instead of investing in new molds, which are very, very expensive, this has just kind of been the way that these cheap keycap sets are. But that's just my theory, a uh, hippio theory. But that's not actually the problem with the keycaps. We'll talk about the problem later. But you're probably not gonna buy the board just for the keycaps, so let's look at some of the other features that make it a pretty good gaming keyboard. And no, it's not the RGB. RGB does not make you a better gamer. It might make you a more confident gamer, but it sure ain't making you better. It's the switches. Now, the black version of the board that I have here comes with these Gateron 1mm actuation travel linear switches, and the silver version of the board comes with KTT Wine Reds, which are actually going to be worse for gaming because they have a longer actuation point. Now, if you've been doing research into gaming keyboards, you might have heard of stuff like Rapid Trigger or Hall Effect or Magnetic Switches. This isn't any of those. These are your normal run-of-the-mill mechanical switches. However, they aren't like your average Cherry Red. The faster actuation point makes them more of a speed switch, which you might have heard of those in a lot of gaming keyboards. Now, when they told me they put gaming switches in here, I expected them to be pretty bad, like pingy and not very smooth. However, these are the new Gateron switches that they actually lube at the factory. If you're new to keyboards, we put lube inside of switches to make them smoother. Don't, don't ask. And these are pleasantly smooth. I don't hear any spring ping. And honestly, if you lube these yourself, they would be probably like 25% better and maybe a little bit thockier. But I have no complaints here with the switches. Now, you're still probably thinking about the Wu-Ting because I mentioned it. And yes, these don't have rapid trigger and they don't have software that supports rapid trigger. Rapid trigger is basically what makes it so if you press a switch and you release it, then you can instantly repress it without having to go all the way back up. It's a feature that's really, really good for games like Osu and um, not that much else. Okay, that's a bit unfair. I mean, it's good for some games like Valorant, but it is a bit of a niche feature. And honestly, I don't think you should limit yourself to just rapid trigger keyboards if you wanna be a gamer. However, if rapid trigger is a deal breaker for you and that's all you want in a gaming keyboard, then check out my video on the Wu-Ting where I made it a lot better. You ever heard of a Wood? Ting? <laughs> Speaking of gaming features, this board does have wireless, and they state that it has a two millisecond delay over wireless, like with a 2.4 gigahertz connection. Now, I don't have the proper hardware to test this myself to actually measure up the latency. However, what I can say is that it does feel very responsive and very fast. And I use a lot of stuff wireless, and this definitely feels like one of the fastest wireless boards I've ever used. However, the ROG Azoth does feel a bit faster still. They also say that if you turn off the LEDs, it has a 75 day battery life, which is kind of insane. But let's be real here. Who's turning off the LEDs? Oh, you're getting mad at me because I haven't turned on the LEDs yet? Well, let me turn them on real fast. And oh my god, it has headlights. It has headlights? What? Now, from what I read, this is specifically for the $295 version that has the fancy RGB and fancy headlights. But the RGB is very pretty and gives this board a very gamery, luxurious touch. The headlights are definitely cool and a little bit customizable, but you can also just turn them off, which I kind of like. Also, you're probably wondering, Hippio, how did you get nine minutes into a video about a keyboard with a wrist rest and not mention the wrist rest? Well, personally, I absolutely hate wrist rests, so I kind of just don't want to comment on that because it'll skew my bias too much. Like, I use a board with a very, very flat typing angle, so something like this just isn't necessarily for me, but I can see why a lot of people would like it, as a lot of gamers really like using wrist rests. Now, you're probably wondering, what makes this thing a custom keyboard? Well, first of all, you can remove all of the switches, which makes it hot swappable. So you can switch out the switches at any time. And on top of that, well, you can take the whole entire thing apart. Well, you can, it'll just take quite a while. And this is where I start to have a couple problems with the board. No, not everything is perfect. Now, what I will say is for the vast majority of people, this board will be good enough. So you won't want to take it apart and mod it. However, some of you, just like me, 
will really want to. You just gotta get it open. You gotta see what's inside, you know? And for those people, you're gonna have to take out about a million screws. Yes, that is a legal measurement. One million screws. Um, just kidding. That's a joke. Please don't quote me on that. But after taking it carefully apart, hopefully you took a picture for reference because putting it back together will be just as hard. We get to view the board. And this is where you see the beautiful leaf springs and whoa, that is a lot of silicone. Now, another feature that makes this board a custom keyboard is that they use a lot of things to modify it, like silicone and foam layers, which all improve or alter the sound in a way that you may or may not like. Now, there is still some room for some mods here, like you could tape mod the back of the PCB or remove the silicone, which is screwed in, by the way, for some ungodly reason. But you would have to be a little bit careful to avoid the battery. This is what really differentiates it from a lot of those other keyboards, like the $200 Logitechs and stuff like that, is they've actually put features in this keyboard to make it feel better to use. And after putting this thing back apart, it's time to talk about the typing experience or the gaming experience. And that is really nice, actually. I'd say this is one of the most fun keyboards I've ever typed on, and that's because of the leaf spring gaskets. This is what suspends the whole entire PCB assembly so that when you're typing on it, it bounces up and down. Now, I've experimented with foam gaskets before on this channel, but leaf springs are a whole nother realm of bouncy. Next, I just need to look at magnet gaskets. Don't worry, that's coming. So typing on this thing feels absolutely incredible, like a lot better than your average gaming keyboard. So it's responsive, it's got decent switches, the assembly is rough, but very pretty. Now, what's the hang up here? And ultimately for me, it all comes down to the keycaps. And remember how I said there was something wrong with them? Now, unfortunately, if you're in a thick gaming session and sweating away and pressing your shift key really, oh, they wobble really, really bad. Now on your normal alpha keys, you probably won't notice it, but on the modifiers like the space bar and the shift key and the enter, oh God, it's pretty bad. Now, at first I thought, no, there's, there's no way this is the keycaps, right? Like, I've got to try out a different keycap and, oh, there's no issue when I use this $20 set of keycaps that I got from AliExpress. So it, it's the keycaps. So ultimately, if you buy this thing, which I'll have it linked down below, by the way, you're gonna have to get over these keycaps and you're gonna have to get over not hitting subscribe. 